Fish and Wildlife now have more money for freshwater turtle disease research. Fish and Wildlife Foundation of Florida announced a $30,000 grant to the agency. The project will investigate the deaths of freshwater turtles in the St. Johns River watershed. Since March 2018, an unprecedented 300 sick or even dead turtles have been reported to FWC. The cause is suspected to be a virus. The grant will allow researchers to further look into this virus. All right, live look at our store smart sky cam tonight from the Best Western Waterfront in North Fort Myers. It's been a while since we've shown you this camera, so it's nice to be able to see it. Shout out to our engineering department for that. And beautiful day here across the area. Looking at the Close Hatchie Bridge, looks like traffic moving smoothly there into and out of downtown Fort Myers. So it's going to be a pretty nice evening across the area. Some high clouds streaming across the region now. Uh, and that kept temperatures down today a little bit. Uh, only 84 for a high after seeing several days with uh, temperatures into the mid to upper 80s across the region. You see 87 yesterday, 84 here. So uh, it looks like that cooling trend will continue uh, uh, into tonight as we're going to be seeing those temperatures overnight tonight falling back into the 70s. And then by next week, we're looking at highs above average many days next week, likely going to be approaching 90 degrees, which I'll show you on the seven day forecast here in just a few minutes. Here's a good Doppler radar tonight dry. That will not be the case tomorrow in some areas. We're expecting a small chance for a few showers and storms here for tomorrow evening with a cold front that's going to move into the area. But right now it looks like for the most part, uh, the forecast is going to be mostly dry here as we head into the upcoming weekend. Currently 80 out at Page Field, 78 in the Cape along Highway 29. We're looking at readings anywhere from 85 to Palmdale, 84 LaBelle and Immokalee. So again, another pleasant evening expected across the region. And then tomorrow we're going to be watching the winds pick up a little bit out of the south and southwest as this cold front approaches our area. You can see the clouds that have been streaming quickly across the state. And that's as a result, of course, uh, this upper level trough that's going to be headed our way and the cold front associated with it. And you can see the storms are extending all the way down to the Gulf. And we're going to be watching to see if we get any more development even farther down in the Gulf uh, that could potentially affect parts of the peninsula here for tomorrow. The Storm Prediction Center nonetheless, though, has a sun a marginal risk for severe weather tomorrow, basically north of the Closahatchee River up towards Interstate 4. And that's where we could see a couple of storms that may produce some gusty winds uh, uh, up into the severe category, if you will. But right now that chance is looking low at this point. And if anything does develop, it'll be on the very widely scattered to isolated basis. So your potential hazards for tomorrow, damaging wind, I think will be the most likely threat from any storm that does happen to pop up. And of course, lightning with the storms. But uh, again, those chances tomorrow only running about 30 to 40 percent. So most of us likely are not going to see much of the way of rainfall with this front as it moves through. So here's predictors starting off tomorrow morning. Notice the winds are going to begin picking up here throughout the morning and afternoon uh, indicated by these window arrows here. But notice that predictor is really not that bullish with that chance for rain along the front. It's going to be very widely scattered. So if you do happen to see one, you'll be one of the few. And then those will track south out of our area here for Saturday morning. And right now looks like the weekend's going to be Pretty nice with highs into the upper 80s and lots of sunshine tonight down to 70 degrees, a little bit more humid than it's been the past couple of nights. And then those winds picking up out of the south and southwest for tomorrow, 84 your high temperature. And we'll be tracking that chance for some late day storms across the area. Here's your Ingman Marine forecast, two to four foot seas with a west wind 10 to 20 knots. Inland waters, a moderate chop and watch out for that chance for a storm or two over the marine areas. Here's your seven day forecast and after we get through the weekend next week, temperatures crank up near 90 expected for most of next week with uh, a slight chance for some afternoon showers and storms here Tuesday through Thursday. Otherwise, a mostly dry forecast here for the next seven days. Get out of the yard, out of the yard, everybody out of the yard, out of the yard. Come on, get out of the yard. They're saying the family wanted a closer look at this herd of grazing sheep but they quickly learned it was a bad idea when they started storming toward them. How they got the sheep out of their yard. You're watching Fox 4 News at 6. Lind. This is wacky. This California family wanted a closer look at a flock of sheep grazing behind their home. Not the 80s band flock of sheep. <laughs> no, I think the sheep were like, what the flock? <laughs> okay. You know, with an L. Yeah, exactly. But they got a little more than they bargained for. Get out of the yard, out of the yard, everybody, out of the yard. Out of the yard, come on. Get out of here! Oh, it sounds so pleasant with a little <laughs> child saying that. The man opened his back gate and hundreds of sheep took that as an invitation to come right in. 
At first, amusing, right? Uh, then the family got annoyed. The sheep wouldn't really budge until the man's wife got onto their trampoline with a tambourine. <laughs> the sheep were there to eat away the vegetation ahead of fire season. Flock of seagulls is what I was thinking of, mm. by the way. And I'd like to be part of the solution, not the problem. Giving you the power to help protect our paradise. The local couple creating a fundraising website to make it easy for you to give to environmental causes. Should have never given that kid back. The kid would be alive probably today if they didn't. So painful as we get new information about the tragic death of a little boy whose parents are accused of killing him and burying him. Why? He was placed in foster care and then sent back to those parents. You're watching Fox 4 News at 6. Incident scene. Live from the station that's in your corner, you're watching Fox 4 News at 6. Here at Fox 4, we're dedicated to finding ways to help protect our paradise, and we want to empower you to find ways that apply to all aspects of your life. That's right. It can be in so many areas. Four in your corners, Lauren Petrelli spoke with a Fort Myers couple hoping to make that a little easier with their new business called Eco-Friendly Fundraising. Be kind and be nice to the earth. Really nicely, really nicely. Definitely. That's not only the motto the Fos family lives by, but it's also the one they apply to their new business, Eco Life Fundraising. Uh, to raise money for schools, they sell popcorn or candles, wrapping uh, paper, wrapping paper mm -hmm. right? <laughs> um, but we came up with an idea for selling eco friendly products. Tired of the same old, same old, the couple combined their backgrounds as a teacher and an eco product designer to create a simple and easy to use fundraising website. So each kid gets their own URL. And then through that, their parents can share that on social media. And everything purchased on that store through that URL goes toward, towards that kid and towards that kid's school. Really, the site can be used by schools, churches, or any organization. They even have a separate site called Shop Eco Life for any consumer who just wants to shop greener. And all of the products are carefully hand-picked. So Piggy Paint, which is one of our products, has no chemicals. It won't peel off. It doesn't chip. My girls love it. Some of the products are even Christopher's own design, like Woo Bamboo. So the toothbrushes are made from bamboo. The floss is made from silk. And um, all of our stuff we call it very eco-awesome. The couple says they already have reservations for next school year. Just, that includes so Crestwell School in Fort Myers, where Danielle currently yeah. teaches. It's just a great feeling that my principal is backing us up and it's just such a great concept and we're so passionate about it. As parents with four little ones at home, the Fos couple says their kids are a constant reminder of why their message is so important. We don't own this world, we're borrowing it from our kids and we have to give it back to them one day. And I'd like to be part of the solution, not the problem. And that was Lauren Petrelli reporting. That couple also wants to give back to the community. So if you shop on their site now or when a fundraiser is over, some of the proceeds will go to the charity America's Tooth Fairy. And in the future, they say they hope to partner with Captains for Clean Water to keep that money right here in Southwest Florida. Well, here's a chance for you to get rid of that uh, unused or even expired prescription drug safely. Fort Myers Police is inviting you to drop off what you don't need this Saturday between 10 in the morning and 2. This is part of the National Prescription Drug Take Back Day. To keep the drugs from getting in the wrong hands or even flushed into our waterways by improper disposal down the drain. You can drop off your unused meds at police headquarters on Whitman Way. And a heads up, if you use Leetran, seasonal schedule changes are about to happen. Five bus routes will return to their off-season schedules beginning next week, Thursday, May 2nd. This will affect service for Fort Myers Beach, Estero, Bonita Springs, the Downtown River District, and the link connection with Collier Area Transit. The Fort Myers Beach tram service will end on Wednesday, May 1st. To view schedules or buy discounted passes, just head to rideleetran.com. And a push to get invasive uh, fish species out of our fresh waterways will start tomorrow as well with a roundup. The three-day competition kicks off through Sunday. Weigh-ins will happen from noon until 3 on Sunday at Bass Pro Shops at Gulf Coast Town Center. All fish will be donated to feed wildlife, patient at Crow and animals at the Naples Zoo and Shy Wolf Sanctuary. For more information or to register, head to our website, fox4now.com. 
Could broken hockey sticks be part of the solution to protecting our paradise? I went to Benita Springs to talk to this college student and others who say, yeah, it works. Tomorrow on Fox 4 News at 10, I'm going to take you into the heart of their mission in Benita. That's where they're keeping broken hockey sticks out of landfills by turning them into mini oyster reefs. And those oysters are filtering toxins out of our water on a scale that may surprise you. It can be significant. We can be talking thousands, tens of thousands of gallons of water per day in, in a water body. That are getting um, clean. Yeah, yeah. I particularly liked it because I'm actually an avid hockey fan. I've been playing for quite some time and a lot of guys out here, they're hockey fans too. So we're just like, why don't we combine them, both of them and see what we can do with them? Oh, they're doing a lot with them. You catch my full report on how hockey sticks are being used to protect paradise. That's tomorrow on Fox 4 News at 10. Well, the Conservancy of Southwest Florida is asking for your help to help some little guys out. Check it out. It's a baby crow eating. The Conservancy says in the past two days, so many injured and orphaned baby animals were admitted to the wildlife hospital that every nursery enclosure is now full and they need more food and dishes for all of the animals. They're asking for donations on their Amazon wish list. For more information, go to their Facebook page. If you're a pet owner in Collier County, you can get low-cost vaccines and microchips for your furry little friend. Collier County Domestic Animal Services is offering $10 vaccines, cheap, for dogs and cats on the last Friday of every month. So that's tomorrow from 11 in the morning until 2 for this month at the Naples Shelter. A microchip will cost 15 bucks. You don't even need an appointment, not necessary. Dogs have to be on a leash. Cats need to be in a carrier and they have to drop their attitude. I just added that part about the cats. Nice. If you're not following the speed limit in school zones lately, you could definitely be more likely to get busted. The Florida Sheriff's Task Force is now wrapping up its five day operation school zone safety, but they still got one more day to go. They're making sure we all obey traffic laws around schools by stepping up their patrols. Again, their last day is tomorrow, but they can get you anytime. A Tampa Bay area fisherman is back home tonight after doctors treated him for a flesh eating bacteria. We do want to warn you some of these images you might find pretty graphic. It happened about 20 miles off the coast of Palm Harbor. Ooh, Mike Walton thinks a fish hook cut him. The formal diagnosis necrotizing fasci fasciitis. It's very rare and all it takes is a small cut to get into your body. Well, now he says he is in good spirits, and like any true angler, he's ready to get back in the water. You know, it kind of makes me laugh. I think, you know, it's a one in a million chance of getting this or whatever. Think I hit the lotto? No. <laughs> yeah, that'd be a better choice. The Azona Fish Camp is having a fishing tournament in June, and part of the proceeds will go to Mike's medical bills. It's a story that really you just feel in your stomach. These court documents coming out painting a chilling picture of the short life of little AJ Friend. He's that little boy who was reported missing in a small town in Illinois. His parents are now being held on $5 million bail for each. That's $1 million for every year their little boy lived. A heartbreaking story. The day after investigators found AJ's body, detectives detail his death. Mary Maloney explains. How sweet the sound. Songs, tears, and blue balloons outside the house where AJ Friend lived and died. It's horrible. It's absolutely horrible that somebody would hurt their own child. The five-year-old endured a lifetime of problems. According to the Illinois Department of Children and Family Services, in October 2013, AJ was born with opiates in his system. By November of that year, the infant was placed in foster care. Less than two years later, in June 2015, he returned to his parents. In 2018, the Department of Children and Families investigated the family twice. In December, investigators found the home to be unlivable with dog feces and urine, but could not determine if AJ or his sibling were being abused. Four months later, AJ was dead. They should have never given that kid back. The kid would be alive probably today if they didn't. According to court documents on April 15th, AJ was beaten and forced into a cold shower. He died that day. Investigators say his father wrapped his body in plastic and buried him about 10 miles away. Three days later, his dad called 911. 
steal a missing child. A week after that call, AJ's parents, both charged with murder, stood in court to face a judge. Inside the jail, where AJ's parents will await their next hearing, inmates posted a simple message to commemorate a short life. R.I.P. AJ. I'm Mary Maloney reporting. Mm. French police in Paris are getting their first look inside Notre Dame Cathedral since that fire more than a week ago. Scientists are gathering evidence on the cause of the fire that damaged the roof and destroyed the cathedral spire last week. Three different agencies are looking for clues which might suggest exactly how that fire started. The fire ripped through that centuries old building on April 15th. Police are treating the cause of the fire as accidental. Magic at the ballpark where you can experience Harry Potter magic while you're watching a baseball game right here in Southwest Florida. Sounds like fun. Like this, climbing for a cause. How you can join hundreds of people in Fort Myers climb stairs to raise money for lung disease. You're watching Fox 4 News at 6. Live from the station that's in your corner. You're watching Fox 4 News at 6. Happening this weekend, you can climb up one of the tallest buildings in Fort Myers. Doesn't sound like fun? <laughs> uh, you will, though, help raise money for lung disease research in Southwest Florida. It does sound kind of fun. Yeah. Yeah, look how pretty it is. The American Lung Association is holding its annual Fight for Air Climb at Oasis Grand Towers on Saturday morning.